Hello, I am Zarkoon, and this is World of Warships. That's right, today I think we're going to do something a little bit different than we normally do, and normally you know me as a community contributor for World of Warships Legends on console, and I exclusively make content for that game. However, today I wanted to take a look at World of Warships on PC, to talk about the new line of German battle cruisers, which I've been grinding in my spare time, not playing Legends and making content for that. So instead, I thought, you know, we would take a look at the Tier 9 German battle cruiser Prinz Ruprecht, which is an excellent ship and may someday find itself in Legends as a Tier 7 German battleship or perhaps a legendary tier. German battleship. Who knows? I just feel like everything that is on PC at some point is probably going to come to console. So what's the story on this line of German battleships? Well, to begin with, we'll just talk about what differentiates them from the main line. And frankly, they are a bag or a ship full, forgive the pun, of gimmicks. Let's start off by talking about some of their features before we get into the gimmicks, but if you take a look at the line of consumables at the bottom of the screen, you'll probably get an idea of what some of those gimmicks are. As we push up toward these islands near the sort of center of the map, we're going to get a shot on a Neptune out there, Tier 9 Light British Cruiser, and if you know anything about the British cruisers, you know that they do tend to pop when you hit them with battleship guns in their broadside. And this is really no exception. There's three citadels and 35,000 damage for our opening shot. So these German battle cruisers have accurate main battery guns relative to the main line of German battleships, but don't mistake me when I say accurate. These are technically still battle, battleship guns, even though they find themselves on a battle cruiser hull. So they do fall victim to RNG sometimes, and the fact that there are so few of them, only eight in this case, sometimes makes them seem less accurate than they really are, if that makes sense. But in my opinion, they're far more reliable than the main guns on the main line of German battleships. And also, these particular guns are 16-inch or 406mm guns, and they rotate 360 degrees. At least three out of four of the turrets do. The turret at the very back of the ship rotates 360 degrees, but the turret on the back side of the ship right in front of that cannot rotate 360 degrees because the superstructure is in the way. But in any case, at any given time, you can easily switch at least 75% of your main battery firepower to a different side of the ship, which makes it a lot more versatile than other battleships. Now the armor on these things, as we shoot at the Zeiten, the Tier 8 German battlecruiser, and we get a decent chunk on him, these German battle cruisers are lightly armored relative to the main line of German battleships. These battle cruisers have decent side armor that can bounce high caliber battleship shells, but their bow and stern plating tends to be 26 millimeters or 25 millimeters. Either way, it can be overmatched by 15 inch guns or larger. Prince Ruprecht has a thicker icebreaker section at the waterline on the bow as do some of the preceding ships in the line, but you can still get smashed right through the bow by high caliber battleship guns. And also there is no turtleback armor scheme, but there is a bit of spaced armor. The torpedo protection has a thick strip of armor right at the waterline, and there's a gap between that strip of armor and the actual citadel plating internally on the ship. It's probably not gonna mess up any high caliber battleship shells that penetrate it. They're probably just going to penetrate both layers of armor and hit the citadel, but who knows? It may catch some heavy cruiser shells and prevent them from hitting the citadel. Not sure, but that's just my feeling on it. 
And all of this to you might sound like a bit of a mixed bag, and maybe to some degree it is. So let's talk about the excellent stuff on this ship and the German battle cruiser line generally. And that excellent stuff has to do with the, as I alluded to earlier, ship full of gimmicks. These battleships are highly concealed. Um, I think with the concealment skill on the commander and the concealment module, Prince Ruprecht can get its concealment down to about 12, 12.2, maybe 12.3 kilometers. Not sure exactly what the number is. In either case, though, I think that is perhaps the best-in-class concealment for a battleship, and that makes it a lot easier to push up into situations like this. Like, the position I'm holding on this map in this game right now, I don't think it would be quite as tenable in another battleship with poorer concealment. You've also seen the secondaries going off at various points in this game. These battle cruisers have long-range secondaries. The ones on the Prinz Ruprecht can reach out to 12 kilometers with the appropriate mods and commander skills, plus the signal flag that increases the secondaries by a tiny bit as well. So I've got them out to 12 kilometers. There are several 150 millimeter secondaries that pen at least 32 millimeters of armor base, and then there are a lot of 105s which pen 26 millimeters of armor at base, thanks to the quarter caliber rule governing German high explosive penetration. But if you put IFHE on your commander and you use that as one of your skills, well, then the 105mm guns pen 32mm of armor, and the 150s pen 47. It, of course, reduces the fire starting chance on the secondaries, and for those of you who exclusively play World of Warships Legends, IFHE is basically the same thing as the cruiser skill equilibrium of power, but it affects all ships and all types of guns, main guns, secondaries, the like. And, as I said, it reduces the fire chance, but most ships just melt under sustained fire from these secondaries, so they're quite good. And you've seen the torpedoes. I've launched those at some point in this game as well. Prinz Ruprecht can launch eight torpedoes off either side of the ship when the hull is fully upgraded. And the hull is not fully upgraded in this game. I do not yet have the hull upgrade on this ship, so I'm only capable of launching six torpedoes off either side. But once fully upgraded, it'll be eight torpedoes off either side. Now these torps kind of have a low alpha, but they do still hurt. They have an incredible long range, though. I think these reach out to 12 kilometers. The downside, though, the major downside, is that they only go at 50 knots, so they're very slow. So they're sort of the torpedoes that you just throw out to cover gaps and the like, or if you get into close range and can YOLO, then of course they are quite effective for that. But again, you don't really have the armor necessary to push up into the face of battleships without losing a lot of HP in the process. Uh, furthermore, these German battle cruisers all have sonar, the trademark German sonar, with a long ship spotting range, and of course they do give advanced warning, or it does give advanced warning of torpedoes. And then finally, these German battle cruisers have the Russian damage control consumables, which means they have a limited amount of damage control consumables. In this case, I think five, when you're using, I think it's called the superintendent skill that gives you an extra charge of each consumable, but they have a limited amount. They do reload very, very quickly, which means that access to these Russian battleship damage controls do make these German battle cruisers more survivable in the sense that in a limited amount of cases, they can immediately put out fires if necessary. Perhaps to do that to, perhaps they want to do that to disengage if they're kiting away and they've gotten lit on fire. Being lit on fire, of course, increases your detectability range by C. So you can pop that damage control 
and go dark in those kind of situations without having to worry too long or without having to worry about the damage control taking too long to reload. So what's the story and the playstyle of these battle cruisers? Well, I think I've kind of demonstrated it in this game. I think the idea with these is to push up into positions that other battleships might not be able to push up into. Utilize the main gun power, but also the secondary power and the torpedoes, and then to use the decent speed and maneuverability, sorry my cat is meowing, the decent speed and maneuverability to disengage when the situation becomes hot, live to fight another day, push back in, and do the same thing. I think this line of battle cruisers really leans heavily into the cruiser part of that moniker. They're more heavy cruisers than they are battleships, honestly. They're sort of brawling, close-range heavy cruisers, and there we do get the skill kill on the final destroyer, the Orkan. That is the close quarters expert, which is always nice. And, you know, you can see this kind of maneuvering here is quite possible. I think the rudder shift, though, on this base hull is awful. And once I get the hull upgraded, it'll go down to about 15 seconds, which should be much more manageable. You'll notice also, though, that this particular battleship does not have a lot of health, at least not when it's fully upgraded, only 59.2k. I think when fully upgraded, it gets 63,000 something health, and that's fine, but it's really not a lot of health compared to other battleships at this tier. So you, again, do have to be careful with these. You definitely want to utilize the excellent concealment the secondaries, the torpedoes, and the main guns. The main guns are good, but they can feel a little bit underwhelming in comparison to other battleship guns. Also, there's a peculiarity with these secondaries. You would think that given my main guns appear to be able to reach over the little ledge of this rock here and shoot the Palmer out there, you would think that my secondaries would be able to do it too, but they can't. I think they must have pretty low firing trajectories, so they can't always get over islands, which is a little bit of an annoyance, perhaps, and a surprise to you if you're expecting the secondaries to reach over the islands. Just something to be aware of with this line of battleships. But all in all, I think this line is incredibly fun. It's certainly the most fun I've had in World of Warships PC in the less than 1,000 games that I've played on this. And I would love to see this line of German battle cruisers come to World of Warships Legends. The only thing is I worry that if this line were to come to World of Warships Legends, some aspects about it would be nerfed. For example, I think the concealment would be nerfed, and really the concealment is key to these battleships. It's what makes them so effective. And then I also think the secondary power would be nerfed in the sense that I don't think they would be allowed to penetrate 32 millimeters of armor because the mainline German ships that we have in World of Warships Legends, like the Bismarck and the Grosse Kurfürst, do not have secondaries capable of penetrating that armor threshold, which I think is a little bit ridiculous. Nevertheless, I am optimistic that if this line were to be brought to World of Warships Legends, it would retain the characteristics it has on PC, because if it didn't, then these ships just really wouldn't be quite as good. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at the new line of German battleships and the Prince Ruprecht specifically. This is a pretty average game in the Prinz Ruprecht, and you'll see once we get to the scoreboard here that we've only done 114,000 damage, which isn't breaking any records. Little over 2k base XP, which is quite good, and I think an overall solid game in the Prinz Ruprecht that does show a little bit of how you might want to approach playing these things. So I hope you found this video enjoyable. If so, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.